right. The next thing that we need to look at with supply and demand is the issue of producer and consumer surplus. This is not the same surplus and um, shortage that we looked at last time around. Um, a surplus still meaning stuff that you have left over, but it's not in terms of units anymore. It'll make sense when you see it. Now, starting with our basic supply and demand graph, and again, we're looking at just for one individual product right now. The idea is if every single person who makes up the demand curve, you know, you've got people willing to buy at this price, at this price, all the way down here. If all of those people paid exactly the maximum that they were willing to pay, then that would seem to be, you know, absolutely perfect for the market and the consumer gets what they're willing to pay and the producer gets the price, and, and, but that's not how this actually works. So what we have instead is all of the people who are willing to pay these higher prices are getting this product for the market price because our equilibrium price is right here. So for all of those people who are willing to pay more, who are actually paying less, you can look at that as money that they've got left over because they would have paid a higher price. So this area right here is your consumer surplus. Okay. The difference between what you were willing to pay and what you actually paid up to the market price. Now, we can look at it basically the same way from the other side of the market. You've got a whole bunch of businesses who were willing to sell at lower prices, but they're getting the market price up here, which means for the producers, this difference between what they were willing to accept and what they actually get paid is the producer surplus because they're getting more than they thought they were going to get or more than they were willing to take for what they're selling. Now, what is so special about the equilibrium price? When we are at equilibrium, what you're actually doing is maximizing the total area of your consumer and producer surplus. That's why we can say that the market price is efficient. It's efficient because you maximize the total area. Now, what happens if that price is out of whack? You know, if you have people in the market as producers who are charging too much and, you know, the price hasn't adjusted yet. Well, let's say, for example, that you're charging a price that's too high. But here's the market price, but what's actually being charged in the market is up here. Now, what does that mean for these areas? Well, what you have in that situation is more being supplied than demanded. So we have a surplus of product. And what's happening to our areas here? Well, at this point, we've got the producer surplus. It's we've got, surplus. Huh? Oh, I'm it's sorry. Surplus. We've got our consumer surplus being reduced. And we've got our producer surplus being reduced also because the quantity that's being sold isn't out here anymore. It's right here. So we lose all of this. It's just gone. Okay? And this is now our consumer surplus. This is now our producer surplus. All of this black that just completely disappeared that's our dead weight loss.
dead weight loss is the loss of efficiency when your price is not at equilibrium. It's just gone. Nobody gets that benefit. Now, what's the problem with floors and ceilings? They put your price out of whack. If a price floor is higher than equilibrium, then it would actually have an impact on the market. Remember, the floor is high, the ceiling's low. If you have a price floor, you're creating a deadweight loss. If you have a price ceiling, you're creating a deadweight loss. That's why floors and ceilings create inefficiencies, because you're killing all of this potential benefit to your producers and your consumers. Okay. Yeah. Can you do that thing where you raise the roof again? I'm 